Welcome in for another Friday safety focus of the week. Today is Friday, January 19th. Wow, a couple more weeks will be in February. Uh, this week's code of conduct is to drive safely, defensively, and courteously, especially this time of year with the added road conditions. Um, excellent job this week working through the snowstorms. We didn't have any slips, rear ending of traffic, people losing our vehicles and putting them in the dishes. I did see a lot of that on the interstate. Uh, so good job this week being safe, keeping the speeds down, and that's the biggest issue is uh, usually it's speed. Um, so keep the speeds in check and, and stay in control of our vehicle, especially on those wintery conditions. Anything to add on that, Ben? Following distance, give yourself a little bit more. It's hard right now because someone's always sneaking in front of you, but yeah. it's so so hard to stop when something happens right now. Just a little bit more distant to get keep the, that distance. I notice a lot of times coming in, like even this morning, that people want to get real close. <clears throat> yeah, sneak up right up, right up your butt. Yeah. All right, 20 days from our from our last recordable. So good job this week. We did have a slip trip get us though, a little stinger to the shoulder, but it's kind of more just first aid. But it's a healthy reminder to really focusing on our walking and working surfaces and trying to eliminate ice and snow on our job site as much as possible. I know it's hard on some of these longer um, longitudinal jobs, such as like improving um, communication jobs that we're, we're drilling long distances and some of these side streets and stuff. But as much as we can put down salt and sand on our walking working surface, surfaces and using shovels to remove snow, uh, we can eliminate that slip, chip, and falls. And a, a good healthy reminder, too, if you do have to walk on ice, try to walk like a pen, penguin. Put your weight over your front foot. It really helps a lot. It gives you a lot of stability. If your weight is above over your front foot when you're walking on ice, uh, it, it does definitely helps a lot. Where we get a little bit off center to the left or the back, uh, laterally to the, to the sides, that's when, our, that's when we slip. And then once we slip, we go down and sometimes we go down it pretty hard. And that's what happened to one of our workers this week. So try to eliminate ice as much as we can on our sites. Uh, this week, I just wanted to kind of we completed our OSHA logs for the 2023 season. We will be posting these in the next two weeks. But part of the requirement in the in the, the record keeping standard in OSHA is to make sure these are posted and reported. So we sent our our OSHA logs to the Bureau of Labor Statistics this week. Overall, we had a, a pretty successful season. I'll, I'll go kind of more in depth here on the next slide, but this is what the document looks like. Uh, I know it's a little hard to see on this one, but a couple of highlights. Uh, we worked over 385,000 man hours this, this calendar year. So pretty a lot of man hours. Uh, uh, quite of an increase from 2022. We had an average number of employees of uh, 167. Uh, the counts was eight. This was, was our highest OSHA recordable year that we had. I'll go in, in detail here on the next slide. We had eight recordable injuries. Five of them were musculoskeletal injuries, such as uh, lifting mechanics. We had a lot of back and shoulder um, claims, a lot of them low dollar claims. Um, but it definitely workers were restricted sometimes a little bit without a work. So those musculoskeletons will continue our emphasis on musculoskeletal injury prevention with with now with Tom Pigeon joining us. He has some some background in this, but also with uh, the, you know, Amy at PT360. A lot of that is ergonomics and how we're lifting and picking and trying not to over pick um, weights. Uh, I think that's one of our biggest problems. Sometimes we we feel like we can quickly pick up something heavy and move it fast. And we think that short duration of time will be okay. But every time we do that, our risk goes up and we have uh, we have those flare ups with those lower back pains or those shoulders pains. And that's what's getting us. And then the other three were fractures. Uh, a lot of that's just from caught in between struck by hands and feet mostly. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about safety toe boots and 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 preventing toe injuries. But again, a lot of it's just where we're putting our hands. You know, those caught in between pinch hazards, 
quickly trying to grab something in between the tailgate of the dump truck, cleaning it out or whatever. So just trying to use more bars, grow bars, things like that, try to avoid those types of those injuries. So we had, we got three of those. So overall three days, uh, three cases with days away work, we, we lost 32 days uh, that way. Our injury rate uh, came out to 4.1. So it's a little bit higher than the national average. Um, no OSHA violations for 2023. We did have uh, an investigation open on mostly on our, our lead exposure and those lead projects that we're on and we came came through squeaky clean without any OSHA citations. Got some stuff from the AGC of Vermont over the past couple of weeks regarding the the um, some of the statistical uh, percentage of non-fatal work-related specific injuries by accident kind. So what we're seeing all throughout the construction industry and in Vermont, it, it correlates to both Vermont and national is falls, again, as the number one injury that's out there in construction is falls from heights. Uh, the second is slip trips and falls from same level. That's, you know, we had a couple of those. Uh, this year. So those are things that we want to identify and see if he's going to put an emphasis on for 2024 for us. Struck by moving, including uh, falling and falling objects, you know, especially that's rig the rigging side of things. We do a lot of uh, stuff with the cranes and lifting structures with our excavators. So 14%. And then the last is injured while handling, lifting and carrying. So that's we had quite a bit that way as well with our ergonomics and our lower back pain and, and bulged disc uh, claims that we had is about 7%. So these kind of the main four add up to a majority of the injuries that are in construction and, and it correlates to the injuries that we're seeing here at ECI. And then just lastly, this is the kind of the most uh, frequent safety site violations in Vermont uh, for the calendar year, fiscal year of 2023. Um, the state issued out about 70,000 in penalties, and they're mostly focused on confined space, fall protection, electrical, and excavations. So uh, we, we saw them once. Uh, I was in a, a meeting at the AGC this past week, and they said that they're told they're being told by federal OSHA they better start issuing out more penalties. So we'll probably see them on our sites. We're going to talk a lot more about uh, inspections and visits and how we want to handle those moving forward probably closer to the construction season come april but um they're 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 gearing up we'll see what see what happens we've been told this story before and it hasn't panned out but again i'm very confident in, in how we conduct our business and and, and our jhas and, and our safety leadership that we have on our projects that we're going to be just fine but again i want to gear up and and uh, make sure that we are you know we're staying in compliance with everything so so we have good job this season. Um, definitely some rooms imp improvement. Like to see those uh, injury rates kind of go to, go back down to that two range. Uh, so it's a challenge to everybody to, uh, you know, safety is a mindset. So let's all kind of make sure safety is baked in our decision making, and we are making sure our priorities are proper. Safety, production, quality, or safety, quality, production, out there on our job sites. Anything to add? Feel free to jump in, Ken or Ben. Hey Matt, what's telecommunications? Uh, that's uh, aerial uh, cell towers. So that's aerial wow. work. Oh, Mostly, okay. yeah, working on the cell towers. Okay. You know, making upgrades and stuff. A lot of that's fall protection. Yeah. Okay, and but then they have their yeah, own. They, they have their own standard. So who are we I comparing see. ourselves to with that that injury rate? Uh, you national. said that's a national average of what? Of who? Everyone out there getting hurt. Or is it just our industry? Or? It's it's our it's our class. What's our class? Um, yeah, we we are a heavy civil construction class. It's it's a it's a an ID number that you pick. Okay. And then we correlate our number with a national average that has the same number that we have. Oh. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff okay. can be available on the OSHA website. Okay, all set there, Matt. All right. OK, thanks. This is part of uh, the OSHA program is to discuss these forms, too. That's correct. Yeah, they'll be posted on all of our job postings throughout all of our the, all the job postings that we have posted. Yep. OK. All right, so I'll take over the screen. Oh. 
Jeez, I didn't turn it on yet. <laughs> uh, let's see. Be back no up here. No pressure, Ken. No pressure. Uh, no, no pressure. I don't feel it. <laughs> let's see, I will. Yeah, usually I have it all prepped here. Let's see. And it's funny how many emails I got already this morning since last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Safety focus of the week. And I have to download the pictures. Zoom that out. Okay. I'll try again. Um, I had to find it. City focus. See if this is the right one. Hmm. I don't know if I got the right thing here. Do you see my screen? I can see the bottom. GMRR Bridge 107. I yeah, I think it's an earlier version. Let me see here. I have it ready, Ken, if you want me to share and I can scroll down for you. Yeah, go ahead, because I'd be scrolling ahead if unless Ben and Brad are going to take over, they'll be doing the project of the week. OK, announcements, here we go. W-2s were mailed out on the 17th, so check with Melanie or Veronica if you have any questions like it didn't show up. Hopefully we have your correct mailing address. And the, there's uh, some changes this year for the 401k for old for people over 50, plus older folks, I guess, um, eligible for additional compens or additional money to go into the 401k for a catch up thing. The idea is that you you get more ready for your uh, your retirement age, and then there's a, a link here to a census. So check with the census, or check with Melanie, Gina, or Veronica. So, yeah, Ken, question. one quick thing to add, some people that have mailboxes in here, I noticed that they put your W-2s, if you have a mailbox oh. up uh, right up front where uh, Sarah's, near Sarah's office, yeah. um, they're in the mailboxes. I, I noticed yeah. them yesterday, Ooh. so um, yeah, just I check those boxes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, we have some new employees this week. Well, we're starting off early this year. We have... Ray Sanborn, he's uh, the civil group, and it was uh, Levi Noel, the civil group. So good. Well, welcome aboard, guys, and I uh, hope to see you around soon. And hey, Matt, you're in the news here for ECI here. <laughs> you you do this on a regular basis, right? You. Uh, yeah, I was surprised, surprised to see this last night, Ken. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Gina noticed it, and I'm like, hey, that's a great idea to put it on here. So that's... Yeah. This is the uh, AGC Vermont build board, and Matt is the uh, chair of the AGC safety committee. And as such, he gets uh, to write pretty frequent articles. Is it every issue, or or uh, it it's a collaboration. It's it's myself, yeah. Lobby. We kind of do it together, and he gives me the credit. So oh, nice of him. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a nice little article there. Yeah. So then we have employee CI employee giving. So several employees went to the Make-A-Wish to present the charity check this week. Some pr a pretty cool picture here in the lobby. If you want to stretch it down, there we go. Um, and also coming in the coming weeks, I'm not sure when the uh, Make-A-Wish people will will stop in uh, on our safety meeting here to to say hi and express their gratitude. We can continue past all the other texts. It's really just a restatement of the previous. We have the ECI primary care wellness program link. And then we're going to talk about the Danby Mount Tabor and Danby VTrans project. So I think that either I see Brad's right there. Brad, are you presenting? Or Ben and Brad? Either I can way. present. Yeah, Brad, go ahead if you're ready. Perfect. Sure. Uh, so I'll just be audio on. I'm in my truck. Uh, Matt, if you could just scroll for me and I'll yep. keep going. 
So ECI was contracted with VTrans to strengthen and rehabilitate VTR Bridge 85 and replace Bridge 86 over the Otter Creek and an unnamed tributary. The contract included 800 rivet replacements, 3,500 pounds of structural steel cover plates and replacement parts, new HPC rapid set bridge seats, new timber decks on both bridges, abutment pointing and new expansion bearings on bridge 85. Bridge 86 was a full superstructure replacement with new four stringer bridge and bearing plates. And below is just a, a contract sheet showing that these two bridges are actually only about 80 feet of, apart from each other. So although it's two separate bridges, they're right there uh, making the access for both of them pretty simultaneous and uh, easy to work between the two structures. Uh, Minoco or ECI subcontracted Minoco LLC and they abated the steel repair locations prior to rivet removal. Minoco also primed and painted floor beam and lateral bracing connections as part of the contract. Here we are installing those bottom floor beam cover plates. We get these plates shop drilled for the new bolt pattern and then match drill through them into the existing floor beam flanges and we bolt them sequentially and then tension them, T tension each bolt after we're done. So paint is specified in areas that typically have the potential to pool water and debris, which leads to corrosion. The lateral bracing had to be removed and reset to remove pack rust between back-to-back -back angles. The floor beam bottom cover plate locations were sandblasted and primed to achieve the required fang surface profile. Um, the, the paint uh, scopes of these jobs are something newer and getting pretty common to the rehab projects. Um, it helps preserve really critical components of the bridges and uh, lengthen their lifespan without more steel work. This knee brace was actually hit by some piece of equipment and severely damaged at one point in its life. So we cut out the existing plate and bolted in a new, new plate and angle assembly. It's a lot of bolts. It is, and th that was all uh, anywhere where the connection matched existing steel holes. We we get the steel blank, match, mark it, drill it out, and then reinstall it. Uh, so this is the, the bottom lateral X bracing that we had to remove half of each X and allow Minoco to remove the pack rust, and then we put it back up with new bolts and they painted all the little white specks brown again to match the rest of the structure. <laughs> to rehabilitate bridge 86 substructure and cut and construct new bridge seats, ECI needed to dewater the stagnant tributary underneath. We used traditional sandbag and poly coffer dams and dewatered the area. So there we are kind of installing the upstream side of the coffer dam. Um, it's about three to four feet of water in, in that tributary. And you can see how bad the abutments were just deteriorated, no grout in the joints anymore. So we repointed everything. That looks like a fairly new superstructure there. Yeah, they they stole some stringers from another bridge and then added oh. two new beams to the outside. It's one of those probably in-house railroad works. Yeah, so you can't tell that it's an old decrepit bridge underneath the sides, on the sides. <laughs> so we opted to jack and shore the bridge and remove the abutments prior to a one weekend rail shutdown allowed by contract. Uh, being a short 16 foot span, the crew used track jacks to lift the bridge by chaining the rails to the stringer packs and jacking under the rail at the approach. This allowed the abutments to be demolished and set on hardwood until the shutdown. So 
in that picture, you can see the hardwood, um, more or less railroad ties we cut to size and placed where the new rapid set concrete abutment would be poured during that one weekend shutdown. And it just so happened, eventually this summer, the entire tributary dried up and we were working in the dry for a lot of it. The timing was right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, custom forms were built and installed during the shutdown and the crew bucketed the rapid set concrete from a crossing 2,200 feet south of the bridge and placed it in the forms. And here they are, they've got the forms up, everything's whaled. A, we subcontracted a rebar cage for these abutments and installed those. And then we had uh, anchor bolt jigs that we built so that we had perfect anchor bolt uh, layout uh, so that the new bridge would match everything. Here we are pouring the rapid set into the, the forms. And the new bridge had to be pre-assembled in halves prior to the shutdown. Um, it was brought to the project site by high rail excavator and erected on the new seats once they achieved 2000 PSI, which took around 12 hours. And we actually purchased a portable compression testing machine to have on site so we could get, you know, hour by hour breaks on this. So as soon as we hit that mark, we could set the structure and continue with the rest of the shutdown work. That's the new galvanized stringer bridge that we installed. Um, pretty basic bridge. It had a one expansion net plate bearing um, that set directly on the new masonry that we poured. Since we had completed much of the track work and deck work prior to the shutdown, all that was left after the bridge was constructed was to deck it, finish the timber back walls, surface the approach tracks, clean up and demob. And uh, actually just after we installed that steel, it rained about an inch and, a th inch and three quarters that night and flooded. So we got everything done just in time and uh, successfully got the track back in place on Sunday morning. And there's your abutment poured and stripped and uh, up to strength. Perfect. And those are the new expansion bearings on bridge 85, which we poured a, a grout pad underneath and uh, new anchor bolts on. Mm -hmm. Cool. Then from the photo archives here, we have the uh, Bridge 107 on the Green Mountain Railroad back wall replacement back in November 2001. It was in Rockingham. They were just finishing up with uh, regulating with a ballast regulator here to, to get the track back together. Hmm. Pretty cool. I think that's Mo Hall on the right and I don't know who's on the left. <clears throat> Neat. All right. Well, thank you very much, Brad. Good job. Hey, Ken, can I chime in quick? Yeah. Um, yeah, good job, Brad. And I think I think the pictures are evident, but, you know, one thing we always like about these shutdowns is, you know, you see guys from three different crews. We have some of our top concrete guys there helping us out and uh, good good team effort. Um, I, I did want to chime in about something completely different, though. Uh, we talked a little bit about some maintenance stuff for cold weather uh, last week. Just have a couple notes to add for this week. Um, <clears throat> so DEF, D-E-F, diesel exhaust fluid, um, a lot of our modern diesel engines, all of our modern diesel engines over 75 horsepower have DEF systems, both in equipment and trucks. DEF is a, is a sensitive liquid. It's not real stable and it degrades um, in the air. It gets crusty. You've probably noticed that. Um, and UV light breaks it down. So the way we store and use DEF is important. Um, so for all light and medium duty trucks, 2,500 to 5,500 or F250 to 50, uh, F550, 
Um, we should be using the sealed containers that you can get from Pat's shop. Um, we really would prefer you not use the pump def in those. They don't use a whole lot. It's not a real big deal to go get one of the two and a half gallon containers um, from Pat's shop. And you should use the entire container, which means you don't need to top those off, um, you know, unless the gauge is down at half or you have a light on. If it's down at half, uh, typically those are five gallon systems um, and pick up. So if it's down at half, you should be able to fit a whole a whole jug in it. Um, if for some reason you have some left over, it, it, you put it in another piece of equipment promptly um, or discard it. it. We don't want deaf jugs um, open or or sealed in the back of pickups in the sun. And so we should really try to use those jugs uh, completely. Um, for big trucks, we, we'd really still prefer that you use the sealed containers um, for, for the big trucks like our movers and our triaxles. Um, pump pump def is acceptable. Uh, we'd still prefer that you use the sealed containers. Um, and, and yeah, th that's it for def. So just just be cautious of, of making sure what's going into those systems is high quality. Um, it, they're, they're maintenance headaches. Um, the only other thing I have is we have some new approaches to preventative maintenance. We're going to start putting windshield stickers on our heavy equipment, just like you see in pickups. Um, instead of saying the mileage, it would say the hours um, of the next service too. So that's just something to keep an eye on. If you notice that the hour meter is approaching or has exceeded that next service interval, um, that's a good phone call to um, Pat or Chico. Um, if, if, if Pat's out or you, you, for some reason you can't get them, um, to schedule that service. Um, you know, those are often things that we can do in the field, or if the machine's coming back anyway, we can get them back to the shop and get them serviced. Um, obviously, we encourage everybody to, to make calls when, when any service item is needed. Um, anything about the equipment that needs attention, call Pat and get it scheduled. Um, some of our systems, um, some of our more modern equipment will have a display that might pop up and tell you when service is required. Um, some of those uh, John Deere's are equipped with JD Link and, and Pat will actually get that message too. Um, but if you see that pop up um, before you just silence it, um, make that phone call too. say, hey, this this machine is telling me it needs service. Um, and then Pat might ask a question like, OK, um, when's the time when you can live without it for a few hours? We'll, we'll try to get it scheduled um, so we can coordinate that. Um, the same thing is true. You know, some of some of the machines won't alert you to it, but you might notice um, either on a windshield sticker or maybe it, with paint pen on a spin on filter as you're checking the fluids every morning, which you do need to do. Um, you might notice um, a, a number of hours written on the filter. That would be the last change. So if you notice 5000 hours on a spin on filter and the machine's meter says 5400 hours, 400 hours is, is our average typical service interval for, for basic oil changes. Um, that's that's a good time to call Pat and say, hey, I noticed this thing is getting close to ready for service. Can we schedule that? Um, so that's all. It's a two prong approach. The guys in the shop have a bunch of different things, um, strategies using some of the software that we have and the hours that they're getting from our off road diesel fuel logs for them to be automatically alerted of these things. We're rolling that out. It's a work in progress. In the meantime, everyone in, 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 in enduring in, into the future it's again a two-prong approach um, we need to keep getting the info back to those guys too to make sure that we're not running way over service intervals it's Thanks. cool we can all we can all help to take care of our equipment because it's we don't want it to be unhappy <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's cool thanks okay guys all right thanks turn back over to to matt have a good day out there yeah, you're watching a group setting. Just please send me over email or text so I can capture attendance. It'd be much appreciated. One just came in. Thanks, Jesse Lumber. That's awesome. Um, let's have a safe day. Let's have a great day. All right. Thanks. Take care. Thanks.